a lot's going on. So let's break this all down uh, with our three-time Super Bowl champion, Willie McGinnis, uh, former Bucks and Rams linebacker Cameron Lynch, and our very own analytics expert, uh, Cynthia Freeland. Uh, Willie, let's start with Devontae uh, and the Packers. Uh, they've decided to have this conversation on an extension. They've decided the conversation's going nowhere. Uh, so what's your reaction? Yeah, I mean, I understand that, you know, sometimes these things break down and they wasn't able to reach an agreement. But the one thing that's interesting to me for Devontae Adams is saying that, okay, let me put all the pieces together. If Rodgers is not here, you want me to be loyal and take whatever deal for the organization. Okay, I'll do that. But you know how it is when it comes to new contracts. It's usually slotting. Whoever got the last big deal, the next guy up, especially one of the best guys in the league, which is the guy we see catching the ball, making a big play, is going to get the biggest deal in NFL history at the receiver position. They should understand that. Forget what structure you have in place or templates or anything else. That's how it works. Now, the other thing is, if you want him to be dedicated and loyal to you, knowing that Aaron Rodgers just might not be there, then you need to take care of him. And he's going to want that security because guess what's going to drop? His production, his numbers, and everything else because he doesn't have the MVP throwing him the football. He understands that this change is definitely going to affect him. So if you want him to make that long-term commitment, then you need to make it when it comes to paying him and giving him that security. I agree with you on that, Willie, right? At that Monday meeting, that shareholders meeting, they didn't have like a picture of that Titanic just sitting there, right? <laughs> Instead of Leonardo DiCaprio, there's Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams getting ready to jump on these life rafts and jump off that ship because it's sinking. That's what it looks like. And for like a football and a business reference crossover, I feel like the front office of the Packers, they're not getting the job done and they're not making plays, right? They're fumbling the football, they're dropping passes, they're missing out on major opportunities by not securing these major stakeholders of the business, which are Aaron Rodgers, and Devontae Adams. Y'all, I'm getting my MBA. So we learned a lot about these organizational structure and the front office for the Packers is not getting it done. Well, uh, the Packers situation is about as blurry as my camera. But when I try to figure <laughs> out what's going on with Devontae Adams, I look to win shares, which is a metric that tries to determine the individual player's value. And when I project that forward, Devontae Adams is a 1.78 win share. That's number one amongst wide receivers. Pay the man if you're not going to have certainty at the quarterback position, because while other people could potentially have a better situation next season if they wait because the cap will go up, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't play, that might not be the case for Devontae Adams. So I actually completely agree with what he's saying here and why he's unhappy. It makes complete sense. And, and Cynthia, to your point, like they have these templates and this structure and everything in place, right, in the front office. But you got to understand times change, players change, things change. You got to be able to adjust, okay? Structure is the reason why Aaron Rodgers is not in camp because you didn't go to him, have a conversation man to man, tell him how important he is, and we're bringing the guy in for the future. Of course, not now because you're the MVP. Structure is the reason why they're not paying Devontae Adams a certain amount of money because they're going off these templates and everything else. And the numbers broken down. Although they've already played, paid, excuse me, other players, this is one of the best players in the league. Secure him, especially if he's not going to have his MVP. I just think at at a certain time, you got to just look at certain things and make the best decision for your players, for your team, and for the organization. And to Willie's point, back in November, they did make David Bakhtiari the highest paid offensive lineman in the NFL at the time. Uh, and speaking of timing, perhaps with the shareholders meeting coming up, uh, now is a good time for Devontae to break off discussions Hello. Uh, before another discussion happens. <laughs>